get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited. We have Ronald Pruitt. He's founder of For a Good Cause. His e-commerce fundraising software programs have helped nonprofits and resulted in millions of dollars raised in online donations across the U.S. and Canada for the past 17 plus years. So we will talk about the early days of the internet. Last year alone, they had $11.6 million raised online by four good cause nonprofits. They've created e-commerce solutions for the Girl Scouts, Alzheimer's Foundation of America, Big Brothers Big Sisters, Ronald McDonald House Charities of Baltimore, and many, many more. They help nonprofits get paid, and that's the bottom line. Ronald, thanks for joining me. I uh, appreciate you uh, having me on. So, Ronald, I always ask because it's Inspired Insider, um, what's been the lowest point and then how you push through that tough time? Well, I would say a low point for me really is – I wouldn't say it's business-related. It's probably more personal-related. Um it has to do with our daughter. Um, we, um, when she was born, she was born with something called hygromas, and they were mm. in her in her cheek. It's little growths, mm. and we didn't even know it at the time. We thought we thought this was just a happy, big cheek baby, you know. Just look like uh, big chubby cheek type. Yeah, of, just oh. a chubby cheek baby, and. We didn't really notice that there was an issue till I'd say she was about a year old mm-hmm. and she got a cold and one side of her face where most of the hygromas are swelled up mm-hmm. and we noticed that there was a big imbalance or not big but it was an imbalance between the sides of her face and you just don't know what the issue is you right. don't know you the think first the worst thing, thing you think the worst the first thing that comes to your mind is that's cancer right and um so we went through you know uh, a process with doctors and you know that basically we need to go in and biopsy that and get that looked at and one of the steps that we took was uh we had to we got an appointment down at the Aflac Cancer Center mm-hmm. which is at the Children's Hospital here in Atlanta and Sitting in the waiting room was probably the the low point because you're looking around and you think that's this this could be us here. You see families that are there, and um, you know this could be this this could be what's in store for us. And it was a hard process. We got we, she had to have surgery, uh, which was fraught with danger too because they had to pull something out of her cheek, which if they if they hit a certain nerve, then you'll right. never, you'll never smile again. Right. But it's just something that that had to be done. Um, and luckily, you know, the, we had a fantastic surgeon, and the biopsy came back negative. And you know, she's had a couple surgeries since then, and it's we've had a lot of it taken out. But just, I think that day when we visited the cancer center was was a low point because yeah. you just you worrying about your kids and yeah. and where you go from there and it also to kind of tie it into the business side it informed that we were on the right path with for a good cause mm-hmm. because at the time that we went down there the the Aflac Cancer Center was was one of my clients mm. so we were actually raising money for the place that we were at that's doing this amazing research on children's cancer came full circle yeah it came full circle and i came home you know and we we talked about it many times that yeah this is this is the path that we we should be on and we're supposed to be on 
because yeah. there are so many nonprofits out there that are doing good work like these folks were yeah. to help these families that we need the websites that we build to to do something to make a difference um yeah so why is that story not on your website <laughs> <laughs> like I that say, should be in your you about know, like i see I, I, it took me a long time to put my photo up there i i've never tried to make it be about <laughs> yeah about us but uh, that should be on your about about section too you maybe know? maybe we had a hard time having her too we we um uh we it took us a long time to have kids we had to get some you know professional help in that in that manner um and you know, it taught me a lot about it just overcoming things um you know when you had going through something reach out for help uh we reached out to a there's a nonprofit called resolve mm-hmm. that uh kind of educates um educates families that are having trouble having kids educates them on fertility adoption and a whole bunch of other things which and, is uh, really common yeah it really is and but we didn't know we didn't know it was common right and you think you're, you, you think you're you, the only one you think you're the only one we came across so many people that we knew at the uh, there was a time when we knew 15 people who were having kids 15 families and it was just all around us and we went to a meeting there and um it just it was like ah oh, okay. opens your eyes yeah we're not alone and we can get through anything you know um nowadays even with my business you know you're never too old to to get the advice and kind of sit down with people um i'm a regular uh, i have regular meetings with score the retired executives group mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh so you know you need to kind of sit down with with you yeah. With people that you can bounce things off of and know that whatever you're going through, you're not alone. So, yeah. So, Ronald, who are some of your mentors? Uh, you know, I don't think that I had a lot of real kind of business mentors. Certainly, like I said, family. Um, you know, one person that might stand out in that I worked retail uh, for many, many years. Um, uh, I mentioned that I had, you know, bad bosses along the way, but I had one really fantastic boss. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name was Joe Braxton, and he was the manager above me in the men's department at a small department store in Auburn, Alabama. Mm-hmm. And he was just incredibly kind, patient. He would he would instruct you on what he needs you to do, but he did it with just extreme class Mm. and i i remember that you know wherever i was going to work i was going to be like joe i I was kind of conduct myself with the Mm -hmm. same thing he would be flexible with you he you know whenever um i got my college classes for that semester we'd sit down he'd say tell me your schedule we're going to work around it i mean i used to come in to work from 8 to 12 in the morning i would go to class from 1 to 5 or 1 to 4 and then I would come back and work five to nine. So I was working full time, but he would he work it out. As long, it, yeah. yeah, as long as you're coming in, you're getting your work done. Mm-hmm. As long as you're producing the results, that's what was going to matter. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if you can be like Joe, um, you yeah. were doing you were doing pretty yeah. well. Always a kind voice. He'd sit down and explain what he wanted you to do, why he wanted you to do it. Not just go do it, but this is how it was going to help mm-hmm. the business. Yeah. So I learned a lot about sales. I learned a lot about just retail and you know why one product moves versus another. Why you know you know yeah. I was I was in charge of doing all the markdowns, all the little things he do. And you, know, he was there as just teaching me along the way. Yeah. So Ronald, what was one of those hard times in business that you had to push through? <clears throat> well. I think it's a hard time probably for us. It actually was it was great personally, but it was hard on the business was after my daughter was born, uh, we made a decision as a family. I mean, my wife is a teacher. We made a decision that, you know, since I was running and still do run a home-based yeah, business. Yeah, you could work from home, yeah. Yeah, that the kids were going to be with me. 
We weren't going to have a nanny. We weren't going to put Good luck in getting any work done. No. <laughs> right. We weren't going to have – we weren't going to put him in daycare. That, um, And I wanted to do it. I wanted to be there with him all the time. Right, right. So – we kind of kind of scaled back the business in a lot of ways you know i we stopped all the advertising we let we just let just word of mouth bring new clients to us and we had enough to 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 keep ourselves going but you're right it was hard to get things done it was hard to uh, kind of be there at that instant when a client would call or when you need to do a sales presentation um i got a dirty the, diaper over here i got to take care of <laughs> i did i did i changed a lot of diapers uh, it was great personally. Um, it was a joy. They were amazing. And on the business side, one very positive thing is it actually helped me identify who were going to be great clients. Because you have to cut out everyone else. You only can keep the best ones. Is that why? Well, when when potential clients would call and they were inquiring about our company, I would have to preface the fact that there are two toddlers right with me right beside me i might have a baby carrier right next to the desk you know i might have a, a three-year-old running around the desk right. so i would in my welcome speech i would let them know that uh that my two little vice presidents uh you may hear them in they're the, the back presidents you may yeah. in the background and that also was letting people know kind of, you know, we were a family company that was going to be the priority, right. that kind of stuff. And I had some potential clients that I could tell right away that that was, we were done. We were done. They, they just could not handle that. I would have my kids with me when I needed to help them. Right. And then I had other clients who turned out to be clients that have stayed with me for a decade who said, that is fabulous. Right. I, they said, I did that. That right. I worked at home and I had my kids and it was wonderful. Right, right. And it, it it turned out to be this great. Not a business, just a business fit, but a personal, personal right. fit too. And you need that in business. You know, you need the client that has to fit with you personally. Yeah. You know, I think most. I hope most of the clients that we have now, I consider them friends. Right. Yeah. You know, if so. Ronald, so what's been one of the proudest moments in the business for you? Uh, well, I think when we hit 10 million per year for the for our clients, that we that we hit an achievement where they had raised 10 million dollars in one year. Yeah, that was that was huge. It really it sat back and big number. Like, yeah, big number. We made it. We we're making a huge impact. Um, that was that was big. Um, certainly in the early days, becoming profitable. To know that, gosh, we can actually do, I can actually do this. That this can be a viable business that you can actually do do good and do well at the same time. Yeah. That we can make this work. That this can be something that I, I hope to do this till I retire. Yeah. I hope that. I hope that or you just won't retire. So. Well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm teaching my kids to, to, uh, to program currently. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm teaching... We're, Teaching them uh, uh, the Python language and how do to program. You do it, how do you do it? Do you do it with a special program like online or do you just – how do you actually teach them? It's like other people want to be like, oh, I want to teach my kids too. <laughs> There's a book that we found, mm -hmm. um, How to Teach Your Kids to Code. And the language is Python. You can probably Google it and find it. Mm -hmm. But it's little step-by-steps. So um, we started this summer. And in between all the baseball games and everything else that we do, we found some nights to sit down and and uh, just kind of go through the book and less little mm -hmm. lessons step by step. And you know, maybe when they're teenagers, I can give them a job. You never know. How old do you think the kids have to be for you to start? Or when did you start? How old were they? Well, they're nine and ten. Okay. Or nine, or ten, or nine and eleven yeah. now. So that's we've we've just started doing okay. that. Um, my son. Who's nine expressed an interest in it, so we yeah. Said, yeah, let's let's try it. It's fantastic. Yeah, Ronald, I really appreciate your time. This has been amazing, and um, I have one last question for you. But before I ask it, just tell people where they can go to find out more and uh, where they should check you out. Uh, just check us out at fourgoodcause.com. That's the number four a good cause dot com, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, you know, invite them to read our blog and. 
check out our social feeds and uh, learn more about uh, being good fundraisers. Yeah, and from a you know business from a business perspective, just to look and see the layout and design, it's really well laid out, and you can tell you took the time to think through each part of the of the site. I appreciate um, that. So, what's the best thing about having your own business, working from home? <laughs> Uh, never having to wear that suit and tie. Um, I tell you one thing that I just really love, um, and this is kind of part of my daily routine, or I try to make it part of my daily routine, is uh, every day before lunch, uh, outside this window is the driveway, and uh, I have a basketball goal there. Mm. And I will spend a half an hour just okay. shooting the basketball. It clears my mind. Yeah. Uh, I'm the makes, same way. Yeah, it just makes me happy. It just yeah. clears my mind. Um, yeah, it, it's great working from home. It really is. Uh, and and you make it work. You know, you can build a virtual team. You know, it's like any other business. Uh, I just enjoy it. It's nice during the summer. Um, of course, my wife is off. The kids are home. Everybody's home. Um, you know, they come just, down and say hello. Like, it's very enticing. Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're ever in Chicago, we'll play a game of horse. Or okay. if I'm ever up by you or down by you. Uh, but thank you so much, Ronald. Everyone should check out forgoodcause.com. I appreciate it very yeah. much. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes.